released a statement saying it was the government's decision whether to prosecute, not JSTOR's. And so it's our belief that with that, the case will be over. That we should be able to get Steve Hyman to drop the case or settle it in some rational way. And the government refused. Why? Well, because I think they wanted to make an example out of Aaron. And they said they wanted to, the, the, the reason why they wouldn't move on requiring a felony conviction and jail time was that they wanted, uh, they wanted to use this case as a case of deter, for deterrence. They told us that. They told you that? Yes. This was going to be an example? Yes. He was going to be an example? Yes. Uh, uh, Steve Hyman said that. Deterring who? Like, there's other people out there running around logging onto JSTOR and downloading the articles to make a political statement? I mean, who are they deterring? It would be easier to understand the Obama administration's posture of supposedly being for deterrence if this was an administration that, for instance, prosecuted arguably the biggest economic crime that this country has seen in the last hundred years, the crimes that were committed that led to the financial crisis on Wall Street. When you start deploying the non-controversial idea of deterrence, only selectively, you stop making a dispassionate analysis of law-breaking, and you started deci deciding to deploy law enforcement resources specifically on the basis of political ideology. And, and that's not just undemocratic, it's supposed to be un-American. Prosecutor Stephen Hyman later reportedly told MIT's outside counsel that the straw that broke the camel's back was a press release sent out by an organization Swartz founded called Demand Progress. According to the 